Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jimmy and today we'll take a look at the latest updates for Android 15. Now we are now on Android 15 beta 4. This is the last major update for Android 15. Anything else after this is just small little patches as it's to be expected for Android 15 to be released right around August 13th, which could be around the exact same time as the brand new Google Pixel 9 series. Now we'll take a look first off at what is brand new with beta 4 versus beta 3 and then I will share with you my top five features so far that are brand new in Android 15. So first off let's take a look over inside of the Android beta feedback application. This is the release notes. This is what is basically letting you know what has been changed, what has been fixed. This release date was July 18th so I am a few days late to this but I've been shooting everything for the brand new Samsung Galaxy devices for the past few days. This one is giving you that security patch level of July 2024 and this is just kind of giving you a little bit of detail, still letting you know that this is still inside of beta. It's not completely done, even though this is the second update of platform stability. So beta three was the first platform stability. That just means that we are one step closer where the next major update should be Android 15 to its full release to Android devices. And those devices that should be getting Android 15 is just sitting right here. You got your Pixel 6, Pixel 6 Pro, the Pixel 6a, the Pixel 7, 7 Pro, 7a, the Pixel Fold, Pixel Tablet, Pixel 8, 8 Pro, the Pixel 8a, and obviously the Pixel 9 series. Now, one of the first big changes with Android 15 Beta 4 is now you can get more details about your device, more specifically about your battery. So when you go inside of your settings, this is where you go inside of System. And then inside of system, again on the bottom, you go to device diagnostics. And then inside of here, you can actually run a bunch of different device diagnostic tests. You can take a look at a few things. This is the display test where it shows you your red, greens, and blues, your touch test so you can see if there's any issues. But down over here inside of that component status, you can actually go inside of the battery status. And then inside of battery status, this will give you your manufacturing date the first usage date and cycle count, which these were there from before. But now what is new with this update is the original capacity of the battery. So this is letting you know how is the health of your battery. And right now mine is still at a hundred percent of the original capacity. Feature number two that's new with beta four is now you're able to unlock your private space with your face. Now, originally this one should have been there from probably beta three, maybe it was a bug and it just wasn't in there. You are able to go inside of your settings for private space and private space is where you're able to keep your private apps in a separate location. So pretty much if you want to have a different login, that's where you're able to put it there. So maybe your work side of things is on the private space. Uh, but this is where you're able to go to the private space lock. This is where you can set up your pin. And then this is where you face, uh, set up your face and fingerprint unlock. For the sake of this video, I did put in my code here for one, two, three, four to make it easy. And then this is where you can go inside of there and you can either make changes or add in. So in terms of the face added, this is the two different options you have set up, which is require eyes to be open in order for this one to be unlocked. And also to uh, always require confirmation. So even if your face is to be looked at, you still have to confirm that you actually want to get into your private space. And this just means that your partner is not trying to unlock your private space as you are sleeping. And then the other option you have here is that you can delete your face model. Feature number three with a slight change will be inside of your widgets. And that is where if you are using that battery widget, they were able to change the color of your phone's battery. So this way, originally they were actually all this green color, but maybe it wasn't so easy to pick out the phone on the very top. So it's kind of a way that they changed this color to kind of make it more apparent that that top one is your phone. You can see the number super easy. And then below, this is where you can look at your additional accessories, such as, you know, the buds, the left, the right, and the case, or, you know, possibly your Pixel Watch as well. So I have mine sitting over here. So I have it as this color, and that is that bluish color that you saw there. So this is the battery life that I currently have. If I had additional accessories that were connected, then those ones would be green. Feature number four that they were able to add in, and that was the adaptive vibration. So when you go inside your settings, you go to sounds and vibrations. As you scroll down, this is where you're able to take a look at your vibration and haptics. Now with vibrations and haptics, you scroll all the way down again, 
and this is where you see the option for adaptive vibration. So I do have this one turned on, and what it does is it will automatically adjust your phone's vibrations based on the environment, like as if it's in your pocket or a loud place. So if it's just on your desk, it's gonna go a little bit, um, but if it is super loud in an area, it's able to go with a, a higher vibration rate. So it says right here, your phone's microphone and other sensors are used to determine sound levels and context. No data is ever recorded. So it's just knowing, you know, is it dark? Is it in a pocket? Is it in a purse? Uh, could it be open on a couch or in a couch cushion? Is it in a bar? Is it around a loud TV? That is how it's able to change the vibration intensity. And now moving on to just a couple of these smaller things. So when it comes down over into a menu setting rename. So now when you scroll down, it's not just called display. It's now actually called display and retouch. So this one does have a rename. Now, lastly, this is the other small one, which is also kind of big because it is talking about quality when it comes down to your small little emojis. They did switch from PNG to vector, which means that when you do send it to another screen size, if it's a larger size, smaller size, higher resolution, whatever it is, it will send at the highest resolution possible, switching to different screen sizes, making sure that when you do send off your emojis, they will look the best that they could ever look. Now, PNG would just be sending the file at whatever size it is and whatever they see. If it's onto a larger screen size, it would be a little pixelated, but now everything is gonna look beautiful. And one thing that you might be noticing right up over here is that any time that you take a look at any of these little emojis, you'll be able to take a look at the corresponding stickers that's on the very top. So for example, if you do this little heart one, all the rest of these up over here are going to be sent off as a sticker uh, that you can send off and they are just corresponding with what you're putting in. So if you put in the heart, everything will show with a heart. If you put in the crying face, it'll be any sticker showing a crying face. Now moving on to my top five favorite features of Android 15 so far. So if you haven't been watching Android 15 beta one, two, three, or four, or all of the other small updates in between there, these are the top five so far. Now the first one would have to be archiving applications. So if you ever wanna take a break from an application, rather than you going through and just deleting the app, application and then having to go and reinstall it again, you have the option to, to archive it. Number one, what it does is it will give you a break uh, from your phone. So this way you don't have to use it. So it's giving you the break that it's not sitting there, but it is being stored via the cloud. Then anytime you ever want to restore it where you tap on the restore button, it'll go right back in with all of your login information as if you never even uninstalled it at all. And also when it is being archived, while it's archived, it is saving you that storage space. So if you go through and you archive several different applications, pretty much all that's happening is that now those are off of your phone being stored on the cloud, it is saving space on your phone, you're getting a break from the application, but you didn't lose any of your login info. And if you ever want to use them again, you pretty much tap this little cloud icon, they'll re-download, put in all of your login info, and now you're using it as if you never uninstalled it. Feature number two that I love is going to be private space. So it's a little similar to Samsung secure folder, even though Samsung secure folder, you know, is quite a bit more plentiful than this. But when it comes down over into your private space, again, this is where you can have a secondary login. Maybe all of your work stuff is sitting here. Maybe if you're trying to take some pictures for Christmas or birthday or Valentine's, or you're trying to propose, or you're doing anything like that, any of the pictures that you take inside of your private space will be sitting inside of your private space files. Uh, this right here could be completely different logins for games and such. And just remember that with this update that we're talking about right now, you finally have the ability to unlock it with your face. So the face is the very first thing that it takes a look at. Then it'll unlock for your fingerprint or you can put in your pin. Again, it could be a completely different pin than what you use for your phone because this one is your private space. If you want it to be a completely different login than the original phone, that is what you are able to do. Feature number three is kind of smaller for some people, but I love it. And that is the new UI for the volume rocker. So this is what it looks like now. It doesn't look like what it did from before. This is where you can change where you want the audio to play. If you are connected to a Bluetooth speaker or headset or whatever the case, that is where you're able to change it. There is no minimize icon here. So there used to be a minimize icon where you can kind of minimize it and make it smaller again. But my guess is that if you're going inside of here and you're already expanding it, you're going to do whatever you would like to do here. And then when you're finished, you're just going to hit on done. So for anybody that was looking for that minimize icon, it is not sitting there, but at least the full entire UI has been changed. It's bigger and I think it just looks a little bit better. Feature number four, this is one where if you like to do screen recordings and you don't want to share 
other applications. The only thing that you would like to record is that one single application. This is called partial recording. Now, originally, when you take a look at screen recording, it was the entire screen, which means no matter where you go, no matter what you do, any application that you close and then you open, you go to your home screen, you go back to the application, you're recording everything. So when you do choose the option for a single app, what will happen is once you open up that application, it'll start recording. And then anytime that you get out of the application, maybe you get a text message, you swipe up really quick, you respond back to the text message, and then you go back inside of that application. All that little time that was sitting there, it is not recording. All it does is it pauses the very last frame right before you left. And then the second you come back, it does that very next frame. So pretty much you can do anything you want to as you're recording a particular application, maybe it's a game called uh, you know, Whiteout Survival or Toon Blast or Pokemon Go, whatever it may be, you go anywhere and everywhere, the only times it'll be recording is while you are in that one single application, which is a pretty big deal. And then lastly, this is feature number five. I merged two together, and this is just talking about internet or some security things that they were able to add in with Android 15. When you go inside of your network and internet, and then you tap on internet, and this is pretty much those Wi-Fi connections that you connect to. When you go right here inside of the settings of that Wi-Fi, this could be a public Wi-Fi, this could be your home Wi-Fi, a friend's Wi-Fi. As you scroll down, you take a look at privacy. You have this option here to actually turn it off. So originally, there's always, like let's say you connect to someone's mobile hotspot, they're able to see your device's name. This is where you can now turn it off. So if you're connected to an open network somewhere, maybe some Panera, and you do not want to share your device's name with the network, you can just simply turn it off. Now, next up, this is a way that you're able to make sure that you have the latest network connection, which is the most safest. When you're still inside of your internet connections, you scroll down, you take a look at your network preferences. Now, inside of here, you have this new option that is called Allow WEP Networks. So if you have this on, uh, you are allowing a older security protocol that is less secure. That's, this was the way that it always has been when it comes down to your smartphones. You can turn this off. So now you will not see any networks that is the older security protocol that is less secure. So those were my top five favorite features so far in terms of Android 15. Hopefully you guys appreciated that. Also, hopefully you guys have learned something new for this update here of beta four. Again, this is the last major update before Android 15 is officially publicly launched, which should be right around, I hope, around August 13th. And this is the exact same as every single year. It's the exact month that they always start the beta program. And it's usually always around August or early September where this newest Android version comes out. So it's the exact same every single year. So hopefully you guys can kind of remember that. I know I get asked the questions all the time with every one of these videos. When does it start? When does it end? When does it officially come out? It's pretty much the exact same month start and month end every single year. But hopefully you guys appreciated this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe on the very bottom left-hand side. And if you like this video, then more than likely you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later.